The Hidden Side of Henry Ford, Startling Revelations Henry Ford, famed for founding Ford Motor Company and revolutionizing the auto industry with the Model T and assembly line, harbored a complex legacy beyond his celebrated achievements. His life was interwoven with groundbreaking innovation and deep-seated controversies. This video delves into 11 lesser-known yet striking aspects of Ford's life, unmasking the darker and more contentious sides of this influential industrial figure. Fact number 1. Resistance to Labor Unions Henry Ford's staunch resistance to labor unions was a defining aspect of his management style. He was one of the last major industrialists to recognize the United Auto Workers UAW, only doing so in 1941 after a series of intense conflicts and negotiations. The most notable incident was the 1937 Battle of the Overpass at the Ford River Rouge Complex in Dearborn, Michigan. During this altercation, Ford's security personnel, along with members of the Detroit police, violently clashed with UAW organizers, including Walter Ruther. This incident drew national attention and was a significant black mark on Ford's reputation, highlighting his aggressive stance against organized labor and collective bargaining. It was seen as a regressive approach, particularly as other industrial leaders began to accept unionization. Number 2. The $5 Workday In January 1914, Henry Ford introduced a groundbreaking wage policy, offering workers $5 per day, which was nearly doubled the average wage in the auto industry at that time. This initiative, while significantly improving the standard of living for his employees, also had strategic benefits for Ford. It dramatically reduced high turnover rates and increased productivity at his plants. More importantly, it fostered a new consumer base, Ford's workers were now able to afford the very cars they produced. However, this move wasn't purely altruistic. Ford understood that, by paying his workers well, he was enabling them to become consumers, thereby boosting the overall economy and, indirectly, his sales. This policy was a key factor in the development of a middle-class consumer culture in the United States. Number 3. Surveillance of Employees The introduction of the $5 workday by Henry Ford came with significant strings attached. To qualify for this wage, employees were subjected to intense scrutiny by Ford's sociological department. The department, established in 1913, was responsible for inspecting workers' lifestyles, including their drinking habits, financial management, and even their marital fidelity. Employees were expected to adhere to Ford's strict moral code to receive the full wage. This level of surveillance was unprecedented and controversial, seen as an invasive overreach into the personal lives of workers. It reflected Ford's paternalistic approach to workforce management, where he sought not only to control the work environment but also to mold the personal lives of his employees according to his own moral standards. Number 4. Anti-Semitic Views Henry Ford's legacy is significantly tarnished by his blatant anti-Semitic beliefs. He owned the newspaper The Dearborn Independent, which, from 1920 to 1927, published a series of articles aggressively attacking Jews. These articles accused Jews of various societal and economic ills and were later compiled into a book titled The International Jew, The World's Foremost Problem. This publication had a far-reaching impact, spreading anti-Semitic sentiments not only in the United States but also abroad. Notably, Ford's writings were admired by Adolf Hitler and even cited in Hitler's manifesto, Mein Kampf, making Ford the only American mentioned therein. In 1938, Ford received the Grand Cross of the German Eagle, a Nazi decoration for foreign nationals who were sympathetic to the regime. Ford's anti-Semitism, which he publicly renounced in 1927, has remained a deeply disturbing aspect of his legacy. Number 5. The Assembly Line The assembly line, often attributed to Henry Ford, was actually a concept he refined rather than invented. Introduced in Ford's Highland Park plant in 1913, this innovation revolutionized the process of manufacturing. By moving cars from one workstation to the next, each worker performing a specific task, the assembly line reduced the time taken to build a Ford Model T car from over 12 hours to just 2 hours and 30 minutes. This dramatic increase in efficiency not only significantly lowered the cost of the Model T, 
making it affordable for the average American, but also set a new standard for manufacturing industries worldwide. Ford's implementation of the assembly line became a pivotal moment in the Industrial Revolution, shaping the future of mass production. Number 6. Racial Segregation at Ford Plants Despite Henry Ford's progressive wage policies, his factories were marked by racial segregation practices. African American workers, though employed in significant numbers due to Ford's relatively inclusive hiring policies for the time, faced discriminatory treatment. They were often relegated to the most menial and least desirable jobs within the Ford plants. This segregation extended to different aspects of the work environment, reflecting the prevailing racial attitudes of the era. While Ford's employment of African Americans in the early 20th century was in itself progressive, the manner in which these workers were treated highlighted the deep-seated racial inequalities of the time and remains a blemish on Ford's record of industrial leadership. Number 7. Ford's Peace Ship Criticisms in 1915, Henry Ford initiated the Peace Ship Project, a highly publicized but ultimately ill-fated endeavor to end World War I. He chartered the ocean liner Oscar II, intending to sail to Europe with a delegation of peace activists to mediate an end to the conflict. Ford proclaimed, we're going to get the boys out of the trenches by Christmas. The mission was met with widespread skepticism and ridicule from politicians and the press, who viewed it as a naive and overly simplistic approach to complex international politics. The delegation failed to secure meetings with key European leaders, and many original supporters, disenchanted, left the mission before it concluded. The peace ship episode was widely regarded as a significant blunder for Ford, casting him as out of his depth in international diplomacy and damaging his reputation. Number 8. Ford and the Nazi Connection Henry Ford's connections with Nazi Germany are among the most controversial aspects of his legacy. During the 1930s and 1940s, Ford's German subsidiary, Fordwork, manufactured vehicles for the Nazi military. Ford maintained control over this subsidiary and profited from its operations. In July 1938, Ford received the Grand Cross of the German Eagle, a distinguished Nazi honor awarded to foreigners who rendered notable service to the Reich. This award was bestowed upon Ford on his 75th birthday, likely in recognition of his industrial contributions to Germany and his well-known anti-Semitic views, which resonated with Nazi ideology. Ford's acceptance of this award and his business entanglements with the Nazi regime have been the subject of criticism and debate, particularly in light of the atrocities of World War II. Number 9. The Battle of the Overpass The Battle of the Overpass, a significant event in American labor history, occurred on May 26, 1937, at the Ford Motor Company's River Rouge Complex in Dearborn, Michigan. This violent confrontation ensued when Ford's private security, along with local police, brutally attacked United Auto Workers, UAW, organizers, including prominent union leaders like Walter Ruther and Richard Frankenstein. The UAW had been distributing leaflets to promote unionization among Ford workers. The incident, captured in photographs showing the organizers being beaten, garnered national outrage and sympathy for the labor movement. It marked a pivotal moment in the struggle for workers' rights in the U.S., significantly damaging Ford's public image and eventually leading to the unionization of his factories. Number 10. Personal Life and Eccentricities Henry Ford's personal life was as multifaceted as his professional one, filled with various interests and hobbies. He was an avid collector of historical artifacts, leading to the creation of the Henry Ford Museum and Greenfield Village in Michigan. These institutions housed his extensive collection of items significant to American history, including the chair Abraham Lincoln was assassinated in. Ford's passion for preservation extended to the preservation of historic buildings, relocating them to Greenfield Village. He also had a keen interest in folk dancing, often hosting dance events, and was deeply involved in soybean research, exploring its potential as a source of plastic for automotive parts. These pursuits reflected Ford's diverse interests and his commitment to innovation beyond the automotive industry. Number 11. The Model T Revolution 
Introduced in 1908, the Ford Model T revolutionized not just the automotive industry but American society as a whole. Priced initially at $850, equivalent to about $24,000 today, and eventually dropping to as low as $260 due to manufacturing efficiencies, the Model T made car ownership accessible to the middle class. Its simplicity, durability, and affordability embodied Ford's vision of a car for the masses. By the time production ended in 1927, about 15 million Model TS had been sold, making it one of the best-selling vehicles of all time. This vehicle's widespread popularity introduced a new era of mobility, significantly impacting American culture, economy, and the development of the urban landscape. The Model T's influence extended globally, positioning the automobile as a symbol of modernity.